Hello, welcome back to my poker channel. I'm currently reporting from some commercial center near my house where I had to sign some documents. It's some good news, but I'm gonna save that for another video. What this video is gonna be about is a session I played last night at Hustler Casino Live. In case you missed my last vlog, I mentioned I'd be playing High Stakes Friday, and that happened. Without spoiling any results, we had a big swing in the bankroll, let's say. So that's enough of the gibberish. You guys don't wanna hear me talk. You don't wanna see my face, even though the lighting out here is pretty nice. And you probably don't wanna see any more B-roll. You just wanna see poker hands and strategy and all that stuff, so let's cut to the chase and head straight to the casino. All right, everyone, here we go again. Today we're playing 5,100 with a $100 ante from the big blind. Pretty big game, so I sit with $100,000, and in the first interesting hand, we're gonna start things off with a premium pocket kings in late position. Zhang opens up the action to 300, and I make it $1,000 to go. Gets back around to him, and with pocket jacks, he decides to just call, which I think is fine, but another raise would certainly have merit as well. Anyway, we go heads up to a flop, which is not great for Zhang. It's ace, king, queen, so we do flop middle set. Of course, I don't know it in the moment, but in this case, flopping middle set is not the best. You always want to have over a pair versus over a pair in these kinds of situations. However, after I bet small on the flop, Zhang does continue, which makes sense since he does have a straight draw and could potentially turn his hand later on into a bluff with removal to jack 10 suited, which would be the nuts. Turn card is the four of clubs. He checks it over to me, and now I gotta think, what do I wanna do with all my hands? And I think on a board like this that I'm just completely smashing as the pre-flop raiser. Betting again is the best course of action. Question is how much? And I think an overbet makes sense. Could get away with some flush draws like eight, seven of clubs, maybe jack nine of clubs, hands of that nature that need to bluff to win the pot and could also represent strong stuff. With uh, pocket kings and pocket queens, I definitely wanna do the same thing. He could easily have an ace or a variety of different hands that could continue, so I decide to bet big, $7,500. Unfortunately for me, he's got one of the worst hands he could have in this spot, so he folds without too much thought. Not a whole lot of action in the first one, but still nice to start the night with a win. In the next one, straddle is on for 200, and action gets to me in late position with ace three off suit. A little bit too wide to play this hand, even though it is an unopened pot, but we're playing the stand-up game, so I wanna win a pot and try to get one of these buttons, meaning I don't have to pay everyone this bounty. Still a little bit too loose in my opinion, but anyway, I do make it $500 to go and get called by Andy, Henry, and Ivan, all of the players in the blinds. So we're gonna go four ways in position to an interesting board of 853, all spades. That gives me bottom pair, but more importantly, the nut flush draw. This also means that no one can have the nuts. So when the action checks to me and I bet $800, I'm a little surprised to see Henry check raise this board to 2300. Of course, we can see the cards now, so he's flopped a flush. It's not really rocket science that he's putting more money into the pot. But in real time, I was thinking he's likely bluffing as I have a pair and the ace of spades. So I just call in position and we see the deuce of hearts on the turn. Now Henry bets the size of the pot or close enough, $6,000. And we have an interesting decision between just calling or putting in a raise. And I think against some small sizes, we could start to turn our hand into a bluff, but against a pot sized bet, I don't see any other option but calling. So that's what I do and we find some help on the river by improving to a straight. Obviously joking, we make the nut flush. We do potentially lose to a straight flush, but can't worry too much about that. Now Henry decides to check it, and of course I am not gonna do that since I've got a very strong hand. I put in around two thirds the size of the pot, 12,400 bucks, and Henry is not in love with the situation, of course. Never fun when you flop a flush, and then four of the suit come on the board. He thinks it over for quite some time, and I don't envy his spot whatsoever, but I think having two spades, I would tend to call. However, Henry is much smarter, apparently, because he ends up folding correctly, and we don't get maximum value from our nut flush. Nicely played by Henry, whereas I just got lucky. 
happy to take it. This next hand is not quite as much action, but still indicative of how the night seems to be going for me. There's a $200 straddle on from yours truly, Big John limps in late position, and then Ivan makes it 600 from the button. Gets to me in the straddle, and I've got ace king. No brainer raise here, so I make it 2800 to go. Big John folds, and Ivan makes the call with queen four suited. Gotta give the man credit for having some gamble in him. We go heads up to a flop out of position, which comes down just fine. It's ace, seven, three, rainbow. He does have a backdoor flush draw and a potential backdoor straight draw with his four. So I'm a little surprised that after I bet tiny, Ivan decides to fold. I feel like if you're gonna play queen four suited in position, at least you gotta hang on for one street on a flop like this. But once again, we don't get as much value as we otherwise might have. Still glad to be winning every pot of significance thus far. Now that hand was pretty straightforward, right? This one is the exact opposite. In fact, this might be one of the stranger hands that I've played in the recent months. Okay, so in this one, Ivan raises to $300, gets to me in the small blind, and I've got ace nine offsuit which I think functions best as a re-raise or a fold, especially in the small blind. But for whatever reason, I decide to call. Not sure what was up with my thought process in the moment, but no time to linger on it because now Pepe re-raises from the big blind to 1700. Gets back around to Ivan and he makes the call. Now it's on me with ace nine offsuit and probably the worst course of action is to call again from the small blind with a hand like this, which plays terribly multi-way and can often be dominated even when we flop top pair. So how is this hand still not over? Well, I decide to pounce on what I think could be some weakness from Pepe. Usually when he has really strong hands, he raises a bit bigger. I know that sounds almost too good to be true type of read, but that's just the vibe I got in the moment. And if I'm gonna flat with some strong hands in the small blind, which I might very, very rarely, like aces or kings, just so my cards aren't always face up when I call in the small blind, then I gotta balance that stuff out with weak hands to uh, get aggressive pre-flop with. Again, this is something I would do almost never, but in this instance, I do decide to go for it. We have an ace, which has some removal to stronger hands, like aces and ace king. And that's about all the excuse I'm gonna use in this hand. So I make it $7,000 to go. Pepe thinks for a bit and seems to give me credit because he releases his pocket eights. But then Ivan calls again in late position with six five suited for about a fifth of his stack, perhaps more. A little bit sketchy because we're not gonna have a whole lot of fold equity going to a flop since the pot is nearly the size of his stack as it is. But king seven six with two spades out there is about as good as it's gonna get for a board that we don't actually connect with. I could easily have ace king, aces, pocket kings, and at the bare minimum, we've got an over card and a backdoor nut flush draw. So I decide to bet small, just like I would with all my hands, including those aforementioned strong ones. And Ivan, despite having flopped bottom pair, seems to believe my story as well, and he ends up folding. So this was what you call best case scenario for playing a hand that easily could have got me in some serious trouble. Next, this hand comes up where the $200 straddle is on once again. Big John limps in and then Ivan makes it 800 from middle position. I'm on the button with ace three suited, which I think is probably best to re-raise with, but being on the button, it's okay to call a bit more frequently than you otherwise might in earlier positions. We have last chance to act, and I'm not too worried about getting squeezed from the blinds. So I call as does Big John. So we go three ways to a flop on which I flop the nut flush draw. It's king nine four with two hearts. Big John checks, and now Ivan continues with a bet of $1,400. This is what you call an action flop. He's got a flush draw and a straight draw, and of course, I've got the nut flush draw. So. Obviously, I want a heart to come, but in the moment, I didn't know just how badly I wanted a heart to arrive. After facing this bet, I don't think a raise makes too much sense. This isn't really a board where I'm gonna connect too often, and Ivan could have all sorts of strong hands like top pair, an over pair, even a set. Meanwhile, I'm not gonna have too many of those given the preflop action, so I just call and Big John gets out of the way. Turn card's interesting, it's the king of spades, so now it's less likely he's got a king. At the same time, it's a paired board, so hitting a flush becomes a little less appealing, but I'm not super worried about it, especially after he checks it over to me. 
We have ace high, which is decent showdown value, and we have removal to hands that I'd be trying to get him to fold if I were to bluff, such as ace queen and ace jack. So I decided to check it back with minimal showdown value and not the best bluff candidate in my opinion. River cards the eight of clubs. Shouldn't change a whole lot, I think. He checks it again, and I don't expect to win super often, but often enough that I end up just knuckling the table and checking back. And we do win this time as he announces queen high. It might look a little bit weak on his behalf, but to be honest, I might have called if he bet anyway. So yeah, this hand ends up amounting to not too much blood, but could have been a lot worse. This next hand, however, will have a lot of blood. Since it is Halloween, we're gonna stick to the spirit. If you're watching from somewhere that doesn't have Halloween, just ignore me, it's a holiday where people dress up and ask each other for candy. Anyways, I have Queen Jack unsuited, and I need to win myself a button as we're playing the stand-up game again. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty as it's just between me and Zhang, so the two of us need to win a hand to avoid paying the penalty. That is the backstory for this one. So, the straddle is not on. Big John limps in. Ivan makes it 400. John calls and I'm on the button, like I said, with Queen Jack unsuited. This hand doesn't really perform very well multi-way. Actually, it doesn't perform well at all, really. It's Queen Jack unsuited. So, I think the best course of action is to re-raise and try to play it heads up. I make it $2,000. I've got position. I've got a winning image. And I could easily have a strong hand. So, why not pretend and see what happens? I make it 2000 Everyone folds except for my nemesis, this hand, who is Jong. One of us is going to win this pot, and one of us is going to lose the stand-up game as a result. So we go heads up in position to an interesting board. It's king, nine, six, all hearts. So we've got the queen of hearts going for us and a straight draw. There's also a king out there, which I could try to represent. Those are all the thoughts going through my mind as Jong checks, and I bet small. 1700 bucks. He's flopped top pair, of course, so he's going nowhere just yet, and we get the immediate help on the turn, the five of hearts. Zhang checks, and I think I should just continue betting most of the time, but occasionally checking back strong flushes like the ace of hearts or the queen of hearts is going to help balance our strategy here on the turn. So not something I would advise doing too often. I'm not really a huge advocate for slow playing big hands, but this time I do decide to check it back. There's also the factor of the stand-up game in play, which I think might make my opponent bluff a little more often. So yeah, I check it back and we get an even better river card. It's the Ace of Hearts giving me the nut flush. Of course, a straight flush is once again possible, but how likely is that? And not only does it give me the nut flush, but it puts a flush on the board. This might make my opponent think that we are gonna be chopping this pot if I don't have a heart myself. Unfortunately for him, this time I do, but he can't know that and that's why he decides to bluff at it in hopes of getting me off a chop, I'm sure. Not just that, but he bets over the size of the pot. There's 8K in the middle, and he puts in two red slash white slash purple brown, whatever ugly color these chips are. He throws two of them in there, equaling $10,000. Music to my ears, as of course I've got the nut flush, as I said. Question is, do we want to raise for value or just call? And if I'm being honest, that's not even really a question. Of course, we're going to raise for value. Can't be scared of the straight flush. So I put in a raise to $28,000. And I think this is where the hand should have just ended since at this point he can only chop or lose. Unless, of course, he decides to jam all in and try to represent a straight flush. But if he's not going to do that, he should probably just let this one go and pay out the stand-up game. But Zhang seems to have some trust issues because now he thinks about it for quite a while and it seems that he's thinking I'm trying to get him off of a chop. And to his credit, I might do that once in a while with black cards myself. This time I am not doing that, which is going to be bad news for him as he eventually decides to make the hero call. Incorrect decision this time, good news for me, bad news for him, and we are on top of that getting an additional $400 for not losing the stand-up game. Very nice hand, best win of the night so far. In the next one, Mike X limps in for 100 and I raise it up in late position with 10 deuce suited. Don't ask me why, I don't really remember why I did this, but I get called by Henry in the big blind and Mike X who limped in. So we go three ways in position to a flop of ace, queen, eight with two diamonds and one heart. There's big cards out there and I raised pre-flop that's about all the excuse I need to continue betting. It's also unlikely that either of my opponents will be too strong on a board like this. At most, one of them might have top pair, but even at that, it's tough to hang on for multiple streets of aggression. So I put in 1100 bucks. Henry makes the call, as does Mike X. 
Once we get called by two opponents, I'm probably going to give up on this hand unless we turn a good card, like a heart or the jack of clubs. Now, it might not seem obvious, but that is a two-way straight draw for me. Any king or nine will now give me a straight. And not just that, but I could easily have hands like aces, queens, jacks, two pair combinations, king 10, of course, 10, nine suited. All these hands are definitely in my arsenal. In this instance, of course, I just have 10 high. But if I'm going to be betting those holdings, I got to find some bluffs as well. And I think this is a good candidate with a 10 in my hand. So I put in another bet 3400 bucks now it's on henry with a weak top pair and this is a pretty tough spot you've got mike x left to act behind you who also called on the flop and of course you could be drawing dead against myself so i don't blame him for folding definitely a good result for me of course as we get him to fold an ace and then mike x lets go of his eight as well not too proud of this one, but I do have to show it because once again, the stand-up game is on. We earn ourselves a button and more importantly, the pot. And that brings us to the last hand of the night. As you guys have noticed thus far, it's been pretty easy, uh, smooth sailing. You could say this one, not so much. So Big John raises to 300. I'm in late position with pocket jacks. I make it a thousand. Henry cold calls in the big blind and then Big John calls as well. So we go three ways to a flop, which is six, six, four rainbow. Henry checks, Big John checks, I have an overpair, so I bet 1100. Henry calls, and then Big John calls as well. Perhaps a little bit concerning, but I assume if, if anyone had me beat, they would have check raised on the flop. Turn card is the seven of clubs, which I'm gonna be honest, is not my favorite. Now hands like pocket sevens and five three suited improve. Henry checks, Big John checks, and even though we are beat by some hands, now I think betting is still more than okay. In fact, that might be the best play looking back but i think also there's merit to checking we let these guys bluff the river if either one of them decides to try that and they could also value bet a worse hand like say for example pocket nines so i decide to check it back in position which i do like until we see the eight of hearts on the river so now any five makes a straight and we are now also losing to pocket eights which i do think either one of these players could have played this way Henry thinks for a bit and bets $5,000, which is a pretty strong play because he's got Big John left to act behind him, who, like I said, could easily have one of those hands. And of course, he's got me, who could also have an overpair or a five myself. So I decide to fold my pocket jacks. Credit to Henry for finding a creative bluff with Ace-10 suited after floating the flop with no uh, straight draw or flush draw out there. The man has heart. You cannot deny it. He gets this one through, and I make the incorrect fold. So this was one hand that did not work out, but at least the pot wasn't too big. Not enough to ruin the night by any means. That was the last interesting hand of my session. As always, I hope you all enjoyed. So as you guys saw, finally had a big win. It's been a while, which is fine. That's just the nature of poker. Sometimes you go through these streaks with a lot of winning or a lot of losing. So booking a nearly $100,000 win definitely feels good. I think it was around 90K. Um, so yeah, couldn't have come at a more welcome time. Also, I'm happy to say the session was pretty straightforward. As I'm sure you guys saw, hardly any need to bluff. Not really any uh, tough spots came up. Smooth sailing from start to finish. What more can you ask for in a high stakes session? As always, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for watching the video, giving it a thumbs up or a nice comment if you did. That's much appreciated. I'm gonna go get some dinner. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.